Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to chapel. Have a seat quick. I've got a word from President Webb. Again, we appreciate your prayers for we appreciate your prayers for Mrs. Webb. I want you to know that uh, a couple days ago, Mrs. Webb is now out of ICU. <laughs> obviously, there's still some more surgery and obviously a lot of therapy to go, but she's uh, moving on both sides. She's communicating. She knows who she is, where she's at, and what she needs to do. So it's a good thing. And uh, President Webb says, I feel like I'm getting my Philippa back. So that's a good thing. Okay. We also have some guests over here. Welcome them to Spring Arbors. Good. As we enter into worship, would you stand together and let's read the call to chapel. Let's join together. We gather together in the name of Jesus Christ to worship him, hear his word spoken as he seeks to conform us to his image to write his word upon the tablet of our hearts and to transform us by the renewing of our minds for his glory. Amen?
Father, thank you for a brand new day that you've provided us. Thank you for your overwhelming love, your overwhelming existence in our lives, God, Father. Thank you for loving us unconditionally. Father, we love you and just as much. <laughs> and um, we thank you for the opportunity to present that to you on days like today. I pray that you will bless this morning and the rest of this day. And we pray in your holy and precious name. Amen. Lauren, Lauren Walther is a sophomore from Cass City, and she's introducing our speaker this morning. I met Kent about seven years ago where he was the speaker at volleyball camp at Bayshore. And since then, he's speaked at various other camps like senior high, which I know a few of you have gone to. Um, it was after the loss of my dad that Kent was speaking, and I came to the understanding that no matter how hard the times can get, that God has a plan and it'll all turn out all right. He's the founder of Discipleship Incorporated, an organization devoted to sharing the word of Jesus Christ to youth and adults. He has authored the Breakthrough Series, the Extreme Faith Devotional Bible, and The Thirst. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Kent Fischel. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good morning. What a great day. It wasn't so nice in uh, Indiana. It wasn't sun out or it wasn't uh, even a little cloudy. It was pouring down rain. It's a privilege to be here this morning. And we're here to worship Jesus Christ. And as we continue to, to worship Christ, I'm going to ask something. I hope you're comfortable if you would just where you're sitting. If you just feel comfortable, would you just take your arms and your hands and just open your hands like this. And in the quietness of your heart and your mind this morning, wow, would you just say, Dear Lord Jesus Christ, please speak to my heart through the power of your Holy Spirit. Will you pray that? And then I'll pray quickly. Father God, we are here to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. God, may what is said be simple, may it be easily understood, may it be practical, and God, we don't want to just be hearers of your word. Wow, we want to be doers, doers of your word through the power of your Holy Spirit in us. Thank you, Father God. It is in the strong and powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we pray, amen. This morning, we're going to talk about an individual whose name is Demas. How many of you, be honest, have never heard of Demas before? Just raise your hand. Usually when I speak on this, there are several. Demas is mentioned only three times in the Word of God. And this morning, we are going to look at the lifestyle of Demas to understand what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ and not to fall in to some of these other areas. So the first slide that you will see up there is the fact that Demas was dedicated. Let's read this together this morning. Colossians 4.14, out loud. Here we go. Our dear friend Luke, the doctor, and Demas send greetings. And then Philemon 1, 23, 24 says, Epaphras, my fellow prisoner, for Christ Jesus, send you greetings. So do Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, and Luke, my fellow workers. Will you say those, those last three words with me again? My fellow workers. Now let's stop for a moment and just say, well, well, how does this play out? I mean, what does this really mean to be a fellow worker? Can you imagine that 
Demas is with the Apostle Paul, and in all kinds of situations, the Apostle Paul is sharing about the life of Jesus Christ and who he is and the power and the forgiveness and the healing and all these things that, that Christ can do. And then can you imagine that, that Demas would have been there? when the Apostle Paul would have laid hands on somebody who was blind, and then, wow, he can see. He would have experienced many healings, I'm sure. And then he would have enjoyed the fellowship of other believers who were going through persecution and trials and hard times, but in their hearts they had the power of the risen Jesus Christ, and they rejoiced together. Well, something happened. And Demas went from being dedicated to drifting. And this morning we want to talk a little bit about that. You can see up here the, the question is, wh where did things go wrong? The third stage that we'll come to in a moment is he deserted. But before he deserted, he, he drifted. I wonder this morning, I'm going to get a little personal here, if by chance you know somebody who at, at some time seemed to have such a desire to live for Christ, and at least through outward, outward appearance and outward experiences, this, this individual seemed to be maybe on fire for Christ. But then something happened. This individual turned and, and chose to go a different direction. And people are wondering, what, why? What, what happened? What, what brought this about? Perhaps it was some sin that that individual got involved in. Perhaps, as we're going to read together in just a moment, it was desiring more the things of this world than the things of God. Let's read this aloud. You're doing very well. Let's read this aloud this morning. 1 John 2, 15 through 17. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the cravings of sinful man, the lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he has and does comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives forever. Wow. You can see with the next slide that worldliness exists in our hearts. Now this morning, I'm going to tell you a story. This story you will not find in the Bible because my little ADD mind made this story up. So it's not, it's not true. But let's just stick with Demas if we could. And again, here's the story I want to share with you. Demas had been sitting for two or three hours, you know, listening to Paul teach and the interaction. And it was just whoo, one of those wow moments. And, and, and it finished and, and people, people broke up and, and went different places. And Demas is thinking, wow, I got to clear my head. I just got to clear my head. And so he thought, I'm going to go out for a walk. And he goes out and he starts walking, not particularly to go any one place, but he walks and he walks and he walks and he even gets into a, a rougher part of the town. And, and he stops and he's, he's hearing some singing. And he looks over, not too far away, uh, uh, across that street. And there's, there's some women that are on a street corner. They're, they're clothed very scantily. They're singing songs. And he looks at them, these girls, and he thinks, wow. It appears from what they're singing that they really don't know the power 
of God in their lives. And I bet he, he probably said, you know, I need to pray for them. I just need to pray for them. And he did. And then he went back. Next day, great meetings, thinks I'm going to go out for a walk. He ends up going back to that street corner. And this time he gets a little closer, a little closer, and he listens to them sing, throws a little money to the cup that's out in front, prays for him silently, goes back. This, this happens day after day after day until one day one of the young ladies steps over and says, now, what's your name? And she introduces herself, and they begin to talk. And then he has to excuse himself, and he leaves. But he comes back the next day, and the next day, and he spends time with this young woman. And then it's time for Paul and, and, and the, the fellow co-workers to, to move on, and he moves on. But he thinks, I got to go back. And he goes back. And after a few days, the young woman looks at him and says, I love you. And I think you love me. But this isn't working. Couldn't you stay? C couldn't, couldn't you just stay with me? We could be so happy together. I can make your life filled with joy and pleasure. And he stayed. He stayed. I wonder, what about you? What about me? We have things that are pulling, <laughs> voices that we hear constantly, all kinds of things that are pulling us in a direction to live for the world, to live for ourselves, to live for others. I wonder, Will you or I choose to follow the deception of the desire to live for the things of this world which are so temporal? Or friends, will we have a desire? Will we have, hopefully, a passion to live for Jesus Christ? I wonder this morning if I could just ask you, are you drifting in your relationship with Jesus Christ? Are you seeking the approval of others rather than the approval of God? Friends, we need to come to the place. I, I just was so filled and challenged as the praise and worship team saying. We need to be filled with, with the presence of God, understanding worship takes place here, it takes place when you're studying, it takes place when you're driving, it takes place when you're on a date, it takes place when you're working, it takes place wherever we are. Wherever we are. And my prayer is that we could understand more this morning what it really means to worship the biblical God, the true God, Jehovah and his son, Jesus Christ, through the power of his Holy Spirit, and not ourselves, and not the things of this world. Probably more than in any other area, I'm on college campuses constantly, speak a lot with high school students as well. And one of the areas that I see that, that has just taken over in so many people's lives is the area of pornography. And if you're here and you're a guy, you know, going, yeah, I guess maybe I could relate to that. And a girl saying, well, I wonder. No, no, this is not a man problem. This is a man and a woman problem. And never have the airwaves been so bombarded with things that would not only reek of the world, but of an area in which we would have desires which you cannot righteously fulfill. And as I deal with so many 
individuals over and over again. And it could come. I mean, I do Christian schools as well. Somebody's saying to me, Kent, I, I was doing an assignment for my Bible class or, or, or just, you know, you, you were looking for something and there it popped up. But just like Demas, it caught your attention. And then it went from just catching your attention to arousing your curiosity. And then from arousing your curiosity, it became something that became a regular part of your life. And this morning, I hope you'll see that wherever you are, whatever you're struggling with, wow, whatever giant seems to be in your life, that there is power through the resurrected Jesus Christ to set you free, to set you free. Well, the next slide we're going to look at is the slide that says deserted. Here we get it from 1 Timothy 4.10. Would you read this with me, please, out loud? Demas, in love with this present world, has deserted me. Wow, that just, that just rips my heart, rips my heart. How many of you knew somebody, raise your hand, who, who at least outwardly proclaimed Christ and you thought had a strong you know, desire to live for Christ but then turned his or her back? Anybody know somebody like that? Raise your hands. And then I've done this with hundreds and hundreds of students, and it's been interesting. Has anybody experienced that you not only know somebody like that, but that person was instrumental in introducing you to Jesus Christ. And through the power, obviously, of the Holy Spirit, you receive Christ. Anybody go through that? In one of my books, I cover this. I mean, and that's got to rip your heart. Rip your heart when people you know have left the truth. Well, let's look at Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2.20. Wow. I could shout, but I have to preserve my voice here. So you help me out here. This is so powerful, so stinking powerful. Here we go. Are you ready? I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, we, we need to, to resist worldliness. Please hear that. We need to look for ways to continue to resist worldliness. But the greatest power is not going to come in just our resisting. The greatest power is going to come, as you'll see in the next slide, the greatest power is going to come only through the power of the resurrected Jesus Christ, can you or I completely resist the seduction of this world. We need to focus our thoughts and affections on the cross where Jesus Christ suffered and died to pay the penalty for your sins and my sins. Charles Spurgeon put it like this, dwell where the cross of Calvary can be heard. Wow. Wow. This morning, this morning, and in a group like this, there are many of us that, that are just questioning, doubting, going through trials. Our life is filled with fear, not with God's peace. All these things going on, you know. And we kind of, we, we kind of say, you know, well, yeah, Kent, I mean, I, I believe in the resurrection of Christ, and we coin that, and we, we do in our minds. But friends, we got to take it into our hearts. It, it's got to be more than just, I, I, I say I believe in the resurrection of Christ. Wow, i got great news for you this morning. I hope you figure this out. God cannot lie. You believe that this morning? God cannot lie. God will do for you what he says he will do. He will. He is not a liar. And he will do it in his time and in his way. 
And friends, I want you to, to understand this, that the same power, are you with me this morning? The same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. If you have prayed and personally surrendered your life to Jesus Christ and asked him to come in and be your Savior and your Lord, you have resurrection power this morning. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? The same power. That's what we're talking about. But guess what? Guess what? We can applaud and we, we can yell, but we've got to act on it. Are you with me? We've got to act on it. We've got to take God's word as true. No matter what other people are saying, no matter what the circumstances might be saying, no matter what maybe is coming up within our, our own minds. And Satan wants to fill your minds with condemnation and guilt. I just talked to a student two, two days ago about this. He said, I'm empty. It's love to the Lord. I'm empty. And he's going through. He happens to be struggling in the area of pornography and some other areas uh, of his life where, where he's struggling. And I just looked at him and I said his name and I just said, you know, do you feel like, you know, you, you, you're hearing, you know, how, how, how could God love you? you? You've done this so many times. I mean, how could he still love you? Or you're so bad, do you really think you could ever be forgiven by God? I go on and on and on. And friends, condemnation in that guilt is coming from Satan. God is going to give you conviction through his Holy Spirit. And as he comes in and brings that conviction, he comes with the knowledge that he loves you. He doesn't love you any less when you're in that struggle. No. His love does not change. And he loves you enough that he wants you to know that you need to trust him. You need to seek help. You need to become accountable to someone who can help you through the power of the Holy Spirit and his word. Find victory. Well, as I wrap this up, it is so important that I share with you this morning the power source. The power source is the word of God. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Thy word am I going to meditate on, to take it in. Not just know what it says, but act on it so that I can prosper in the things for your kingdom. If I were to ask you, how much time do you spend in the Word? And I'm not talking about, I think it's great. I, I love this university and, and know that Jesus Christ is proclaimed and you're taught to, to, to be disciples. But I wonder how many of us say, well, I've got Bible class and that ought to just take care of everything with my schedule. And, and it, it will help you to learn. But I wonder if you've lost sight of what it is to get alone with God. To get alone with God. And to open up his word, his love letter to you. And I want to issue a challenge. I call it my 15, it's on the, up there, it's up there. 15, 10, 5, 1. Would you be willing, and many of you are doing this or more, with God's help to set aside 15 minutes a day, catch this, not just reading the word, not just studying the word, but reflecting on the word and then getting a specific application to apply in your life in obedience. Willow Creek, a large church, did a study, and I was told, I don't know if it was 45,000 people plus they, they interviewed. It was a, a large number. And they asked people, no matter what stage you're, you are in your, your walk with God, you might have just received Christ, you might have been here, wherever, it doesn't matter. What is the one thing that has helped you stay the course the most? And the word was reflection. 
on the word. Reflection on the word. Wow. It isn't just rushing through. Well, I had my quiet time. God, here, do this for me now. I did this for you. Do this for me. No. It's getting in and allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you into God's truth. Ten stands for ten minutes a day. Ten minutes a day would you be willing to pray. Now, I'm still here, praise God, and I prayed coming up from Fort Wayne, Indiana. And I'm still here, primarily because I didn't close my eyes, thank you, when I was praying, okay? So obviously, you can be any number of places, and you can pray. In the quietness of your heart, you can block other things out. Okay, now I'm not suggesting this in your classrooms, okay, when somebody's up there speaking. But I am saying, can block things out and talk to God and listen to God. In 10 minutes, try it. 10 minutes can seem like, uh, what's 10 minutes? Hey, you're playing a game, nothing. What's 10 minutes? You're texting, nothing. What's 10 minutes? You're praying like, whoa, you've got to be kidding me. I mean, I can remember when I, I prayed, this was a while ago, but when I prayed, I thought I'd just try this. I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed, and I'm even excited about it because I'm going, yes, I'm going to make my mark. And I prayed and I prayed, and I looked and thought, you know, I was going for 30 minutes, and I looked at, at the clock, and I thought, i got to be near there. I prayed two and a half minutes, okay? <laughs> that will tell you where I was. And you understand what I'm saying? So split it up, but spend time praying. The five stands for try to do this at least for five days out of the week. The one, which is so encouraging. I've seen hundreds of young people and adults take this challenge. The one is that you would look at least once a week to do one act of kindness for someone. And friends, you want excitement. If you can do it and they never know you did it, that, that's even more exciting because it's more just unto the Lord. But there are things they need to know, and there are things it's good they know. So would you think about that? Now, in this challenge, I need to say very quickly as I close, there are some of us here that have a false idea of, of, of really who God is. And if you missed a day, if you missed a day, you know, you're of the theory that God is probably speaking to angel number, I'm making this up, 777, who's in charge of Bible study, and God looks at him and says, oh, you know, Susie missed a day. What would we do to her today? Would it be the cement block, strike her by lightning, have her get in a wreck, have her boyfriend not care about her anymore? What would we do today? This is going to be exciting, okay? That is not the God of the Bible. If you miss a day, God would call you by name, and I'll just use Susie, and say, Susie, wow, I missed you yesterday. Susie, I knew you were going to face this temptation, and I had, I had some words that would give you strength to overcome that temptation. Or Susie, you know, you, you were going to talk with somebody. I knew that. I had some words of comfort that I wanted to give to you to help that person you were going to share with. Or just maybe, Susie, wow, I love you so much, Susie. I just enjoy spending time with you. That's the God we serve. He wants us to spend time with him, and the more time we spend with him, the more we get to know him. And the more we get to know him, the more we will trust him. And the more we will trust him, then the more we will move out and share the love of Christ with others. It will happen. It will happen. Well, I have a young man that I shared one in particular. I have two, one college and one high school. And I thought they needed some accountability in this area. I asked them, they said yes. So I thought to myself, what my world's kind of texting. I thought, what would be easy? So the high school kid I did it with first, I said, when you have your quiet time, he wanted me to check up. I said, could you just text me one word? He goes, what? Just text me one word. He goes, Kent, what's that? Done. Done. And he has. He texts me the word. I know he's had his quiet time, you know, the way we, we talked about it. He's missed. 
He knows there's not condemnation for me. He knows that I care about him and that I'm encouraging him and we're looking for ways to get it more of a regular time and place. That's what it's all about. Well, friends, the Holy Spirit definitely is here. And many of us, as I offer that challenge, are doing that and more. But I want to ask you a question. If you're here, if you're here this morning and you're saying, you know, this is something I need to do. I really need to do this. I need to get in the Word of God, not just reading, study, but reflecting and applying it specifically in my life. And I'm willing to take that challenge. I'm going to try 15 minutes a day. And then 10 minutes of prayer, five days a week, seven, whatever God leads you to. And then work on one random act of kindness. If that's where you are this morning, we are a family. And for those wonderful visitors, guess what? You're part of the Spring Arbor family this morning, just like me coming in here. So we're a family this morning. And I'm not going to ask you, because we're a family, to bow your head or close your eyes. We need encouragement from one another. We need to stand with one another. So I'm just going to ask you quickly as I close before I pray. If you're here this morning and the Holy Spirit spoke to you and said, this is something I need to do. I've got to get back in the Word. I've got to be doing the prayer. Then I want you just to stand to your feet right now. Just stand to your feet all over this auditorium. The Holy Spirit has spoken to you and you know that this is something you not only want to do, but you want others to know, hey, encourage me, encourage me in my walk with God as all of us need encouragement. Thank you for your honesty. Let's all stand and I will close in prayer here. And by the way, as you're standing, I can say I've known Ron for years and I, I know that his staff and he would love to sit down and talk with any of you. Some of you maybe who have in that di drifted stage or deserted. I know uh, our Vice President of Student Affairs very well and know that her whole staff would love to sit down with you or professors. Find somebody. Talk to somebody. That's so important. So important. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for your Holy Spirit who is here, who has led us in your truth. And I pray if there was anything that was me and not you, that you'd remove that from their minds. And God, help us, help us to not just read your word, not just study, but to really reflect on it, to think it over, and then get that specific application and live it out in obedience through the power of Jesus Christ in our hearts and lives. God, change this campus because we've changed. Help us, help us to be at that place where you desire for each one of us to be. Help us, God, as we're in process growing closer to Jesus Christ day by day. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Wow, it's in your strong and powerful name that we pray. And all God's people said, God bless.